first place goes to Pasta Dish number five. Yeah! yeah. Hey, junkies, mandolins. Now, doing junk is all about making it a ritual, right? As with any addiction, it's all about the ritual. So, one of the rituals is drinking tea, right? Mandolins is a bit of a tea snob. Uh, frankly, I'm just a snob, period. Not really fair to blame it on the tea. But... This afternoon, we'll be drinking a not-so-inexpensive white tea. Uh, and I drink black tea, too. So, you know, I don't want to hear, oh, this motherfucker only drinking white tea. Nah, I got plenty of black teas. I got plenty of green teas. I got plenty of pu'er teas, organic, uh, which is a fermented black, so extra black. So, with every tea comes a different means of firing it. By firing it, it means brewing it and different tea fires at different temperatures depending on the type of tea so for this white tea let that come in the focus probably should have did it earlier so for this flowery white pico tea um fires at about 185 i'll round down i have the ability to uh, choose the temperature. So we're going to round down to about a buck 80 and let it steep for a couple of minutes, two minutes. So let's see how that comes out. We are going to put the tea. Beautiful, beautiful petals here. So we're going to put the white tea in the French press. And we're going to cook some water. Typically, I drink tap water. I've got a really odd fascination and affinity for tap water. But for my expensive teas, uh, I go with bottled water. You typically want the water to be as neutral as possible. So I keep bottled water on hand for that. Oh, wasting the bottled water right there. I'm going to put it in. Cool. We're gonna set this to 180 and let it rip. As this water cooks, I want to talk a little bit more about the tea. Finally, this is coming to focus so you can actually see the specific type of not only tea, it being white tea, but the specific a strain, if you will, of the white tea. Although I live in St. Pete, I still, still to this day, rely on my vendor from New York City, right on Bleecker Street. When I lived in the city, I used to go there regularly. Uh, there's a few locations. I still get everything sent to me from New York. Uh, really the best deal around, uh, even including the shipping. They always send me a nice catalog as well. Zoom in on this. It's really uh, an awesome company. A lot of you folks from New York that are watching this video, I'm sure are well aware of the Puerto Rico teas and coffees. I'll include links uh, in the description. They got absolutely fabulous coffee, tea, and uh, confectionery treats as well. We are at 180 degrees, so we're gonna pour the water in. It was 16.9 ounces uh, in the bottle, and that's exactly how much this glass uh, mug holds, so a perfect amount let this steep for about three minutes the more delicate and or expensive the tea is the less you want to fire it for or let it steep uh, the longer let it go the more tannicins begin to develop 
and those are the not so great tasting uh, characteristics of the tea that are produced. The tea is ready. It is done steeping. So we are going to push the plunger down, pour it in our lovely teacup. I typically give it a nice swirl around. I don't like you drinking uh, an IPA or some sort of unfiltered beer. You want to get all those tasty bits in your glass. And there you have it. You know, obviously they call it white tea for a reason. Very subtle, very delicious. There's a bunch of properties uh, to the tea itself. I don't want to get in trouble for making uh, more outrageous claims than I typically make, but um, everything from antifungal and bacterial to just overall high in antioxidants. Thank you as always for joining us. Keep well, stay safe, and I will see you junkies next time. Peace.